welcome to another exciting episode of 31 Days of Indie Horror. This is the last day of the show, and I'm uh, very happy to say that and everything. Um, also, uh, I did decide to choose a Halloween movie for the film, so uh, for the a last one. Halloween movie. No, but this is, uh, no. but I'm Jonathan Moody, uh, the host of the show. I'm also here with. Paul A. Brisbane is otherwise known as the Moo Cow Moo. So he, he likes cows, so he says Cowloween a lot. All the know, time. All the time. But we did a horror movie called Beg. Beg for your life. Um, it says uh, the worst serial killer since the Boston Strangler begins a killing spree through the streets of Salem. I would say it was probably the worst serial killer since then, yeah. Paul Fair was, word, not mine. Paul was not a huge fan of the movie itself. Um, well, I have to preface that by saying I think the genre's dead. I think the genre's been dead for 30 years. There's nothing in this film or any of the movies that have been made in the last 30 years that are serial killer, mass killer kind of movies that are any different than anything you've already seen. So mm -hmm. that's the thing. That's fair. That's a fair assessment. Um I am a huge slasher fan. Like that is my that is my life. That is my love, and uh, that's what got me into horror in the first place. Was like movies like Scream and um, and and uh, Friday the Thirteenth. I know what you did last. I know what you did last summer. I know what you did. Yeah, but so this movie, Beg, let's uh, let's we're we're gonna. Um, I think this is gonna be one of the shortest interviews that are you know reviews that we did for. 31 days of this year because uh, we just felt like, you know, ending it like that. Um, so this is a very indie version of a slasher film. Um, tries to do kind of a, you know, kind of a change or kind of a different thing where, you know, I mean, I don't know if you can spoil it or, or not, but uh, uh, with regards to the cop. Yeah, we can, you know, we've been spoiled. So look, we've been spoiling pretty much every movie that we've done so far, so. You've been spoiled. Well, yeah, I've been. He's never been, he hasn't been on the show since last year, so. Last year, we had a really terrible stinker for you, and you enjoyed that one. That was, um, uh, it was the Robo uh, Vampire or oh, whatever. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this one is, uh, you know, this one's silly, but not, I mean, it's more serious. Yeah. There's some there's some little lighthearted moments in it, but really it's a serious slasher flick that kind of involves um, you know this cop uh, this retired cop Jack Fox and who, that's where the twist ends up. Yeah, so I won't go into it. Yeah, let's but. not go into that. But uh, so retired uh, uh, retired cop Jack Fox is uh, basically trying uh, basically kind of like. He's not on desk duty, though. He's well, sort of... he's, he's not getting the job done anymore, so they take him off the job, and they hire in this new guy who has hair. <laughs> and none of the other cops of, have most hair. Most of the other cops don't have so hair. So they don't like him. And hair guy starts to go around and figure things out. He's got a sullen teenage daughter. Uh, who, it's not a teenage daughter. It's a uh, sister. Kid sister, Kid I sister. Yeah. Which makes more sense. The tooth like, does not look like he could be that kid's father. I guess, yeah. And there's really no, like, there's no real backstory with that, except that they do pull out a picture of the father, uh, I'm guessing his father. So their her grandfather. Father. Yeah, their father. Wow, yeah, their father. So he puts the, the picture up, so I guess that the father so, must have died. I, and that's the thing. That's part of the issue I have with this, is that you don't really understand the relationships. You don't understand why, who's doing what. Yeah, it's any of the characters, but... Yeah, somewhere along the line, I guess the father and the mother must have died, and she has gone to live with him and his wife. But they don't actually explain that. She's just being sullen and, yeah. and jerky all the time. Yeah, and, like, I, I get it. Like, if there was a lot of... There should have been a scene where she goes, you're, you're not my dad, or something like that. Don't tell me what to do, kind of thing. You know, like a line like that. Or because something where for they, a long time, we're thinking that it's her daughter. Where they delineate the actual family. Yeah. that's going on and then the same thing with as far as a lot of the characters they just kind of float in and out and you're you may mention like nobody ever says anybody's name so you don't know who they are yeah or what they what the how they're related to each other but except like the sorority house you know they all are sorority sisters things like that but like or the friends the friends from high school the, you get to know them a little bit the incredibly deaf sorority girls yeah 
the deaf sorority girls who don't hear the people getting murdered. Ten of them. Yeah. The one girl is like on the phone the whole time, has no clue that whole sorority house is being murdered one by one. It's funny. It's it's sort of you hear thumps like there was there was one thump and I'm like oh god they must have heard more than one thump. Is she like what is she thinking that they're doing just uh, thumping on the ground you know on the ceiling? Like she'll go outside and wearing nothing but a nightie going hello 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 hello. You, you're hello, just messing hello. with me. She invited the guy in, which we never really see, which would have been cool if. But, you know, she had her had her back turned, and the. And the but of course, the killer movie. does get in that way, and uh, I, don't know. I guess. You know, the, the killer can do anything he wants, whenever he wants, except the very very end, which we won't get into. We won't get into. We won't spoil it. But I I, just, I, w- I will say that the whole time, I you remember I kept talking about Debbie Rashawn. Debbie Rashawn's in there, and I'm like, you can't kill Debbie Rashawn. You okay. just can't do it. That's a law, and I thought they were going to break the law, but. They break the law in many movies. I'm sorry. There's yeah. even some we did on 31 no Days of New York. No hurting Debbie Rashawn. And Debbie Rashawn gets hurt. Sorry. Gets killed. You know. But Debbie Rashawn likes getting killed. Like, don't don't make a law where she doesn't get to have fun. Wow. Debbie Rashawn's not too awesome to be killed. I, she is, but Tiffany Shep has got it. Yeah, well. But, like, a lot of that is early on in the movie. So it's not even, like... This movie's an hour and 45 minutes long, by the way. Way too long. Which is way too long. And I felt like they could have cut out 30 minutes of this movie very simply. Because there was too many characters that didn't have much to do with each other. That it... it, it, If they... He didn't have to show every death that you had. I mean, it could be, like, that the cops just get a call and... And, oh shit! There's another murder at this place. You know? And and I can't believe I'm saying this, but there's probably too much nudity. It really doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. It's just well, extra filler. That's that's the thing. When when it becomes ch- like, you've talked about this with me before. That um, when there's there's nudity, that's fine. Like whatever. Like it's sort of a staple for our indie horror. However, when it gets gratuitous and it's just like too much, it's just padding. At this it's point. just yeah. It, it just feels like, like yeah. It's it's padding. It just feels like okay. What are we gonna do next? Let's have somebody take their shirt right. off. Right, as opposed to having you know something that pushes the narrative along that's important or that explains something or, you know, it, it makes the narrative more interesting or compelling. Instead, we'll just have some girls taking off their clothes because that's what they do apparently all day long. So this movie stars Tony Moran, and he plays Jack Box, and he was uh, in Michael Mike uh, was Halloween. He played Michael Myers without the face in the first, you know, you only see his face or whatever. But he wasn't the he wasn't the shape. He wasn't the right. you know whatever. Um, so he came back to be in this movie, which is kind of cool. Um, and it's set during Halloween. It's kind of it's and got it's, a Halloween thing it's going. Funny, he had hair in Halloween. Yeah, he did. <laughs> And then um, there's that weird hair thing going on in this film. I'm not sure what's going on with that. And then PJ Souls, PJ who Souls, also is in course. Halloween, uh, Christina Klebe, who was in Halloween: The Rob Zombie one. Uh, then there was uh, Michael Berryman and Tony Todd, Deborah Sean, Tiffany Shepis. Um, so there was a lot of like, there's some Halloween references kind of thing in there. There's a lot of stuff that's like... You yeah, know. there's a lot of kind of, frankly, red herring stuff with uh, Tony Todd's character and Halloween and sort of all this spooky stories about jack-o'-lanterns. Sa- and stuff Sam Wayne. And Sam Wayne, and none of which has anything to do with the actual story that actually happens. Yeah, I feel like it had too much. Mm-hmm. Like, we were talking about there's a, there's a camp, <laughs> then there's a sorority house, uh, the there's witches. Stuff, yeah. I mean, it's like... It's like... Uh, they took like every different genre kind of thing of slasher stuff, kind of put them into one who, movie. Who was the writer? Uh, Kevin McDonald. Kevin McDonald. And yeah. you said that he's done. He did one other movie other that I know of. Um, they did Tony Todd is in that one too. Oh, and, that's uh, what you were saying about that. Yeah, and it was um, it was like he a, likes his Tony Todd, doesn't he? It was gonna be a series, I guess, and then it became like a movie. I think it's an anthology. Um, I kind of want to see that. I, I forgot what's called season something or something like that. And uh, he had kind of an odd character. He was just oddly intense for like a teacher. And he was like touching people and just well, being kind of that, inappropriate. That was strange. okay when the later you see that he's like fucking one of his former students. Yeah, So I guess. like it, it, 
Well, it's not okay. It's consistent, I suppose. Well, no, it's not okay. Like, he shouldn't be doing that. I'm just saying that it's, uh, you know what I mean? Like, that it's okay with his character. Like, yeah. that's tip. Like, it's him consistent. touching the t- student. The only thing is that student wasn't really creeped out by it, which most students would sort of be. Even that student, right? she didn't seem like the type that would be in there, his, her teacher, you know, and stuff, so... Uh, but then you find out later she, he was fucking one of the students, and then you find out, you know. He so tries he to was strangle also, her. Yeah, and he tries to, like, strangle her at one point. So you're kind of thinking, oh, this guy could be the killer, right. I guess. Red you herring. Know. There's a lot of red herrings because, I mean, that's just what they have to do for these things. If you have a killer with a pumpkin mask on, you can't let it just be, you know, know who the killer is. You have can to find out. He can go anywhere he wants and knows where everybody is. He pops up whenever he needs to. He can bend reality. <laughs> Girl's running this way. He's chasing her. And then all of a sudden, he magically appears here. Girl's well, in the water. He magically appears up Yeah, underneath. that's what I was going to mention. All because you were talking about stuff, that. Right? You didn't like and that. And that's, that's standard, too. And, you know, at least in Halloween, there's the suggestion that there's something supernatural going no, on. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There definitely is. No, but in the later ones, like 4, 5, and 6. Oh, yeah, the Thorn series. But in the first one, he was he was an, he was an escape mental patient. There was no, you know... But there, there, is, there is a lot more to him going on. That's what Loomis was saying. And that's what he was getting at. Sort of, I guess. Because he did fall off the out the window and he survived. Hell yeah, and he know. was the first one to do that. Thank you very much. I was in the theater with everybody else at the same time watching that, and everybody fucking screamed because nobody had else had done that. You don't walk away from your death scene. Yep. He did. People freaked out. So people were like, oh, my God, he must be supernatural yes. at that point. Yes. But he wasn't, there was, that was the only problem with the Halloween series. They never really showed that, like, you know. Well, that's because they had very, very inconsistent writers after that, and that's because John Carpenter had no interest in doing anything else besides the first one. Yeah, he was going to do a whole, like, there's a whole thing about him. Wanting to do like a movies about Halloween. Oh yeah, and he didn't yeah. want to because you know they kept telling him, "Oh well, you need to make more of these." And he's like, "You make well, more I, Michael Myers I, movies." I told yeah. one story, and that's all I wanted nope. to do. Anyway, that's. I mean, I guess that I guess that fits with Tony Moran being in it. Um, but yeah, uh, so that that was the thing. Like this character has become sort of what that is, what that's become. Like people kind of expect. That your killer is going to be able to le- come out of the water right. and, when you you never saw him go you in know, the water. If it's a supernatural thing, maybe you can understand that. But as it turns out, that's not the case. Uh, maybe there's I don't know. There was a little bit more that we didn't get in. We didn't get to in understand. Yes, because because the Sam the Sam Wayne thing. Like, what did that have to do with the ending? What did that Nothing. have to do with the rest of the the things? Like Nothing. the fact that it became Halloween and all of a sudden. There was a the chick was still alive. That didn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah, nothing. nothing you were saying that was like a witch character or something, witch thing. Like she was the witch from sixteen oh, 1610 yeah, or whatever. Yeah, that, that was another red herring. Oh, that creepy house has a witch. That, and then she tells the story about the the woman who watched her house get burned down and her family killed, and then she's in the house again, haunting it because I guess somebody else built a house there, and now she's haunting that house, uh, and. That plays in towards the end because that's, I guess, the only one. That's the supernatural part that ends up happening. But it's not the pumpkin head guy. It's the witch thing, I guess. I don't know. It's, it's so confusing. confusing. Yes. It's not very clear. I, you know, it's there was a lot of issues with this film. I, mean, I feel I, like I feel like there was they, some good stuff about it too, but it's just. I feel like they confusing. had a great story, and then it just kept getting changed. Mm-hmm. That happens in a lot of indie films, like. I think I've even talked about this in my 31 Days of NDR, but like a lot of times there's a great story to begin with, and then people come in and say, Well, I'm not going to do that, or Mm -hmm. I don't think you should do that. Maybe you should do do this this. instead. And then it gets all mixed up and everything. Here's the other part of that problem is that if you've already shot 20 minutes worth of footage doing other stuff that you don't want to do anymore, well, what are you going to do with that footage? Really? In an indie film, are you going to just waste it? No, most time you're going to fit that in somewhere, somehow, even yeah, if it doesn't so necessarily make yeah. sense. And I feel that's what some of this footage is, is that it's, it was from other ideas that either were cast aside or I don't know, cause, I was mean, kind of pushed to squeeze Are you, are you saying the Michael Berryman one might have been? 
I don't know. It's it's tough to decide which one I don't was the think real so because, story in there. Because uh, Tony Moran came up after that, unless they reshot an extra day with. Now they wouldn't have done that with Michael Berryman. Well, we so. didn't even know the that whole. Uh, uh, yeah, we didn't know that was a flashback. flashback. It, it, like, yeah, that was it was so just, confusing. It was very confusing. I, I so I've seen this movie before, and uh, I just totally hadn't seen it since it first came out and everything, and so I, it's just been a while. Um, and so it wasn't like fresh on my brain. So I, I do, like I remember a couple of things, but not really much. And so that scene happens with Michael Berryman, and I was just like, "Who's wait, wait?" So we found out who the killer is already. It's like not even an hour in the movie. What's going on? And then you find out that the uh, that it was like the one they're talking about the strip club. Because it got really confusing. It is, because then you're like, well, which move, which girls are the ones that were killed by Michael Berryman and which one were killed by the pumpkin head? And it's like, well, wait, most of the girls were killed by Michael pu- Berryman. No, most of them were killed by the pumpkin head. Most of them were killed by Michael Berryman, I think, because remember, he goes into the house and there are all the bodies there. And he's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I don't He was in that house, but he was in the sorority house. Right? No, 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 not the sorority house. The sorority house no. is different. So I don't know. Maybe the, um, you know what? It just hit me. Um, and so, all right, spoilers. We're going to have to do it. Sorry. You can't, you can't if you it. are a filmmaker who's, uh, or the filmmaker like Kevin McDonald, please forgive me. I'm going to spoil the fuck out of this thing right now. So, Tony Moran mm-hmm. is the killer. Mm-hmm. Spoiler. The cop. You know, he's the, he's, the cop is the killer. So, I, I kind of had a feeling because I, I sort of remembered it, but sort of didn't. So, I was like, it would be funny if he was the killer. Um, and he was, you know, because it, it sort of also makes sense. He's a grumpy cop right. who, um, who, who brought and down the right, right, right. Because there, is, there, and therein lies the kernel of what could have been a really, really good story. He he gets involved in this this horrible killer thing. It changes him as it would, and as he gets older, he starts to pick up tendencies. He decides he's going to become something like that himself, and so he starts slacking off on these. Uh, investigating these murders they get pissed off at him they're going to make him retire and he doesn't want to retire because the cop is a perfect uh, cover for him to be able to continue killing people so he has to push up his plans and he ends up killing more people and ends up going after the replacement guy's kid or just sister whatever uh, because he's the next person in line. Well, I don't think he went after her because of that. I think literally she he never met her. Well, yeah. So that he, she was just another girl it's that just, happened to be it's a casualty. Convenient. It was convenient. Yeah. Um, but but we still don't get back to the whole well, witch yeah, thing. I, but here's here's my, my thing is, remember, so he found the guy's lair, remember? We're like, is this a house, you know, or whatever? And you were like, right. this looks like a bread factory or something. And then we find out that it's Michael Berryman's house or whatever, or whatever, like a lair where he was... Keeping where his, they were in the his elevator. Like dungeon, you know, right? He was keeping the people there. Maybe, maybe he took over and started doing this stuff, like maybe uh, using another place similar to that. Well, so. he he kept them in the cabin, the cabin that was all boarded up. That's right. where they found. That's where they found. But the like, you know, it, 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 he was taking cues from this guy, though. I mean, yeah, the the the, the elevator learning. scene in he, the bread factory. That was the guy right. that they arrested. That they thought he thought was the guy. And it turned out to be not the guy. Remember? Oh, oh, right. right. Okay, okay. Never mind. That was completely different. They they thought it was it's somebody so else. It's confusing. Or, which that was that was bad. That was bad police writing yeah. because uh, they would not have actually just like without a warrant they wouldn't have came into this guy. Although it's consistent because that happens later on, or I guess he's flashing back to the original thing where he says, uh, "I don't have a shred of evidence, but we're going to do it anyway." Yeah. It's consistent to him <laughs> just being a terrible. He's cop. a shitty cop. He's a shitty cop, and. He's, you know, it's sort of like how, it sort of like has a little Serpico thing going for it, you know, where there's the, the, the one guy that wants to do good for the thing, and then there's the, everybody else that's just like, yeah, we don't fucking oh, care. Oh, no, the cop really. who looks like he's 12 because yeah. he's got hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he is younger than everybody else. So, and then, then it turns out one of the older cops has, quote, unquote, buried the report, and that's why the young cop with hair uh, wigs out on him, but... What is the report that was buried? No, remember it was the remember it was the report of the two the couple that were making out. Mm-hmm. You know that they were about that, and the girl touched it, or the guy touched her breast and everything. And then she they heard the scream, and she said, "Let me get the fuck out of here." But why would he do that unless he knows the guy is the killer, that his fellow cop is a killer? 
Because no, 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 no. It was saying Jack was the one who buried the report. Then why didn't he go and beat up Jack? Because he got mad that they allowed Jack to, to bury the report. See, I thought he said that that guy. That's no, why no, he no, went no. After he him. got went after that guy for letting him uh, for like letting Jack do this. Well, I like, know Jack did it. <laughs> because uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't know that part. All I know is that he. That's what he said because he got mad. He said it's confusing. He said actually he did say something specifically about Jack. You know. Like, why do you, uh, you guys cannot be just following this guy, just, you know, blah, 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 you know, or something like that. Like, he, he knew Jack did it. I caught that. So I was like, okay, okay. So he's mad that these guys are having allegiance to Jack. That was his line. You still have an allegiance to Jack, so you're not letting me do my job. That actually, the reason Jack buried the report is because that led, that led him to Pumpkin House, you know. Pumpkin killer, which made me as the audience go, okay, now Jack is the killer. Not because of that, but because Jack is not there while they're trying to investigate. So this other cop doesn't think it's problematic at all that Jack just takes this report and which, buries which, it. Which Jack treated that guy like shit. That guy was the guy that he like gave a finger to. He, you know, he always tell. But they're them, still you know, cops. They still have jobs they're supposed to do. I don't know. There's that one part. In Ridiculous. The, there's that one part in the movie. There's that one part in the beginning of the movie where the guy's like yelling at him, saying, "You know, we got we got to get back to work, Jack. What are you doing? You're you're not doing anything. You're not going back to work." And I'm like thinking, uh, like. Like, why is he getting so mad at him over this stuff? It's weird. And now it's like, it makes sense because like it, Jack doesn't, yeah. Jack doesn't want to investigate and any of this Jack, shit because he did it. Jack keeps having all these really weird dreams, these disjointed dreams, and we don't know why we're seeing that and why it's going on. Now I kind of do a little bit just because he's stupid and fucked up, you know? <laughs> so like he has the dream about the girl in the diner calling him, hey babe, and not leaving enough of a tip, and then she... Pisses, you know, she's pissed off at him and walks off. And he has a lot of dreams. And then yeah. he does it again, where he actually leaves, only she doesn't call him babe this time. Yeah, he kind of just walks away. It's like, it's why weird. did we see this? I, I guess we're sort of seeing the deterioration of him. You know, his yeah, mental state. I guess. Everything. Which you know, we'll, we'll go into it later. You know, like that that becomes a big thing. I don't know. There's a lot. <laughs> this movie, I I wanted to like. Cause I like, I mean, I like it still. Like, it's still something that I would watch, you know, if somebody wanted to watch this with me. I, like, I just found time. it confusing. It's and... just the problem with the movie is it is very confusing. There's too many characters. Too many characters. There's too much going on. Yeah. There's too much story going on. Yeah. It, that that doesn't get explained. It needs to get pared down. It needs to have some characters removed. It needs to be tightened up considerably. I mean, you look you at know. most cop serial killer movies right and the more of it is just set on this one guy maniac cop dealing with you know trying to track down the killer right and then they along the way they meet different characters but it sets up for whatever and then there's murders i feel like they had so many great ideas for like murders and killings and so, just decided to put it all in one movie he could have just taken some of that stuff and used it for a sequel mm -hmm. or something you yeah. know like he could have made two movies out of this. There or was something there like was that. just way too much going on, and then yeah. all the all the Michael Berryman stuff seemed like an entirely other movie. You could have done three movies, frankly. Yeah. And then you know, getting to the to the technical aspect of it, there were some problems there too. The lighting was the lighting really was not pretty. Good. Yeah, there was there was a classroom scene with Tony Todd that was dark. Yeah, as there's fuck. a lot of dark and scenes. We were just like, wait, why is this so dark? Yeah. We think. We think it might have been an abandoned school or there something. There was no electricity. Yeah. <laughs> so. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, there was a lot of scenes that were just way too dark. And, yeah. Um, but, you know, all in all, I found it to be a, a pretty entertaining movie. I don't know. Like, I I, I... I really wigged out when, you know, they go and they find, you know, a couple of times they, they there's these huge murder scenes with all these bodies, and you don't go there. Like... They yeah, skipped so, the scene. They skipped, the, yeah. They, 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 there's like clues there. There's stuff there. It's like, well, there's your chance to give information and let the audience know what's going on. You know. But they didn't have they didn't have uh, money for for that. I don't yes. know. I don't know. Like, it's easier to shoot a scene where two people are talking in and out. And the ending? Can you make sense of the ending? No. 
No, no, no. Not at all. I have no idea why she came back to life. Otherwise, that it, I'm just glad it was Debbie Rashawn because since it's Debbie Rashawn, it makes sense because Debbie Rashawn's awesome. But what was so confusing was and like I get I get it because like the whole movie was him writing beg out making people a couple people a couple people. I mean, that unless a it's another one of his delusions that just pops in, but the film ends in such a way that you can't tell. And then she says, "Beg for your life," and then kills him. So I don't know. Maybe he's dead. I don't know. I like, I, I honestly, it's kind of a bummer because this could have been something that could have become like a franchise, you know, like yeah. Beg Two or something. No, it could have. It, it definitely had the potential. It's just they had to like, they had to cut some of the fat, which might, which sucks because some of the actors and stuff. But they could always put those as deleted scenes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's the beauty. Like. Independent filmmakers out there, if you're watching and you like in making tighten independent movies, tighten up your script. Tighten, not just tighten up your script, but like, you know, say you make a, make a script that's a hundred and or a uh, hundred and ten pages long or something, you know, which really long, you know, right? And then you shoot it and you realize, oh man, I have an hour and forty five minute movie, right? You cut it down to, you know, an hour and a half, maybe an hour and twenty minutes, something like that. Um, and then if people are like actors are like upset like oh man I spent hours preparing you know days working on this role and, and getting this good and then you just cut it out well just say it's in the deleted scenes the thing is is that these scenes they have to mean something they have to be important they have to push the narrative along if they're not doing that then they don't need to be in the damn movie it doesn't matter who's the actor in there you need to get rid of that crap. You don't right. need padding. You don't need people arguing for no other reason than to pad the film out. Stuff like that. Well, that happens all the time. I know, and that drives me crazy. You know, you don't need all these red the herrings. Current. There's too many red herrings. Um, just focus on on the, the basic part of the story and do mm -hmm. it well, you know. And then, you know, get the technical aspects done well as, as you can as well. Um, I thought the acting was kind of spotty. There were some good... Uh, performances there were some that weren't quite as good um, you know most of the folks that that we come to love like Tony Todd and, and Michael Tiffany Perry Shepard. and Tefty Shepard and Bev Rishon, they were great they were fine some of the newer actors I mean yeah. you can tell they were newer but even then I kind of yeah. liked it because it, it gave me a fresh you know thing and people did nobody was cringy nobody's acting was so bad I was like oh right you know everybody did uh, I think a decent enough job, you know, it's just mm. like, it, it just proved your point of like Tony Todd or t even uh, like, you know, uh, Tiffany Shepes, uh, PJ Souls, those actors really shine. Tony Moran, I love him to death and I want to see him do more stuff. He, he really doesn't act a lot, yeah. you know, and you can sort of tell with this movie. Like he's not... Um, he kind of does everything He's the same performing. voice, and um, and it's just no emotion. It didn't feel like yeah. I didn't feel like I got anything. You I, know? I tell you, one person, one one actor who I initially was not wild about, but by the end I really, really actually turned out to really like was the kid sister. Yeah, she at actually. At first, you didn't like, but at the first minute you meet her, she's oh, a yeah. total cunt. Yeah, she's and just I hate to say that word, but that's how she was. Solid and one dimensional, but. She actually grows, and then by the time the the film ends, I kind of, you know, I actually had something I was really hoping for. I was hoping she was going to be okay, yeah. you know. And um, that's due to the actress. It wasn't due to the writing. It was due yeah. to the actress. She did a great job. <laughs> I liked her a lot, Excuse too. Me. By the end of the movie, you really actually cared about her, wanted her to live. Um, Which was rare, because... Most of the other characters. Yeah, you didn't give care. a shit about them. Yeah. You didn't know them. Well, you didn't even know them, their names. They most just, of them were just death fodder. Yeah. You just, know, they were just, you know, were okay, we're going we're gonna to kill these people because they really don't mean anything right. to anybody right, right. Um, in the rest of the movie. So even the friends that she has, like you could literally, boyfriend, the boyfriend was such a dick character. Yeah. And just can not care less I have him. a real serious problem with movies like that. I really can't, I can't get into movies like that anymore because if you don't give me characters to care about and the only thing you're giving me to, to root for, quote unquote, is the killer, what are you saying to me? 
You're telling me that I want to be somebody who wants to go out and slaughter people? Is that it? That I get my kicks off of that? No. I'm sorry. Well, I mean, it kind of, I think it kind of brings the, the, the dark side of everybody. Like, a lot of people have that side of like, you know what? I wish I could go on a killing spree, but I can't. Because you know, I don't, no. I don't want to kill people. I think, I think you know? society has too many damn killing sprees in real life as it is. Uh, I because mean, because people think they can get away with it and they can't. I don't think it's because of these movies or anything. No, really. no, but it's those feelings, and I, you know, I, I just don't need to see that. Okay, no, I totally get that, and uh, I, I. It's I, different when it's mythic. When we're talking about vampires or werewolves or witches like that. And we were actually talking about earlier that he yeah. likes more supernatural horror. Doesn't really like slashers. I do. This right. is like, you know, and I was very surprised to actually completely watch this happily, you know. I mean, you. I give it a chance. I mean, you never know. You might find somebody who does something very, very different and fresh and new. It's just, I've seen so many of them over the years and they're almost always the same. It's no. There's very little out there that hasn't already been done in this particular genre in my opinion but exactly you try because you always have a little bit of hope um, and there were a few things that were a little bit different in here but for the most part there isn't much in here that you haven't already seen before all right well thank you guys so much for checking this out hope you guys enjoyed it let us know what you guys think um and uh yeah um, give Did us this end up being one of your shorter reviews we ended up talking about yeah, a lot I think of this is stuff. about 30 minutes or so all right. yeah so like for for ending on Halloween, was this a decent film to end on? I think so. I mean, like, look, um, I've seen a lot worse through this 31 Oh, days. yeah, we've seen worse movies than And this. this isn't bad. This isn't bad at all. No, this and is still kind of meh. You know what? Screw it. I wasn't going to do the stegometer thing, but I would say that this would be a five on, my st on the stegometer. I don't think it would be, like, high up as, like, this was bad. I just think it was kind of meh. You know, like it was whatever. What would you yeah, say? I'd probably give it a seven. You give it a seven? Yeah. Stinkometer goes like bad is ten and, and one is uh is good. So you give it a seven, I give yeah. it a five. Bad, but I've seen a lot worse than this. But film. next season, get get ready because the stinkometer is coming <laughs> to the thirty one days so of the So you're gonna VR. do another series of thirty one days thirty one horrors in thirty one days? Well yeah, but it's gonna He be complained good. so much the right. first one. I said, well, that was because I was doing <laughs> basically all of them by sure, myself in sure. one month. I got jobs and stuff. Man. No, I but I was doing, no, do I mean, no, no, I, I, I get that. But I'm just saying, I couldn't get that many people to, like, guest on it or whatever. This time, I'm like, all right, I'm going to start it in February. Then, now, this is October. A little here, a little there. You know, right, yeah. So, now, we're just starting the next one in December, and we're gonna, I'm going to do it once a month. Uh, or not once a month, once a week. And it's going to be fucking nuts. But it's going to be good. It's going to get it all done. It's going to be all ready and, and everything by uh, 31 days. Uh, uh, you know, by Halloween, uh, October. So, However, this one, the next one coming up, it's going to be 31 days, 31 movies, 62 people. There you go. That's the plan. So this has become an indie film cafe tradition now? It's going to be. And okay. then we're also doing the um, 31... Uh, Stingometer scores. Okay. So that is going to be crazy. Uh, I don't know uh, how I'm going to handle that, but I have to write them all down and, and everything. It, so. it means we have to have an extra point in there to make it to see which movie gets a 31 instead of 30. Why? Because 31 days, 31 oh. points. <gasps> Dude, stop go. giving me ideas. <laughs> we got to have that extra brownie point. Oh my goodness. Who gets the extra brownie point? I know. We'll have to add one extra point for mm -hmm. the worst movie, I guess. I don't know, but you're not going to be in every one of them because you know. just can't do 31, Sorry. <laughs> 31 movies. So I can't. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's going to be done. It's going to get done. It's a challenge, and I am very happy to accept. Right. Um, but thank you guys so much. This is awesome. I really, from the bottom of my heart, I appreciate this. Uh, you guys checking this out. 31 Days of Indie Horror. Uh, so check us next year for a whole new season, whole new 31 Days. And it's gonna be it's gonna be insane. But he will, he will be. And I think I think I've got you marked down for six of them. There you go. So you go. that's fair. Uh, like once a month sure. coming on, or he can do once a month. He can't do more than that. So, no. but you know, and a lot of these are gonna be everything. Uh, everything's been through like Tubi. This is actually a movie that's on Tubi right now, so you can go see it yourself. So go check it out, please, if you haven't watched it and you heard our 
don't know. I, I'm sorry if we spoiled it, but you you've been warned. So you've been warned. You you had you had the chance to exit out of the video, and if you did not, that's your fault. There you go. That's not ours. All right. Well, thank you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this, and check us out next year. Have a happy Halloween. Halloween, baby. Bye. Bye. The monkey. We are monkeyless. Somewhere. Nope. He's gone. He ran off. Oh well. Bye, monkey.